right, welcome everybody. We can give give everybody a few more minutes to hop on, but I wanted to hop. Uh, oh, get this out of the system now. Talking's hard. Well, let me start over. Hey, everybody. <laughs> welcome. We're gonna give uh, everyone out there a little bit more time to log in, another minute or two. But uh, just wanted to say hello and and welcome back. Actually, now welcome back to you. Some of you guys were actually here Friday and I wasn't. So welcome back me. <laughs> Aaron Powell's estimating, he's starting a pool saying it's gonna be within 10 minutes if somebody asks about the space mouse. We'll see, we'll see how quick that happens. <laughs> Ooh, we, got a, we already got a hello from Scotland. That's, that's exciting. Well, it's exciting for me because I'm in Boulder and far away from Scotland. I have been to Scotland before, though. It is it is a nice place. It's very green compared to Colorado. Colorado does not have a whole lot of, well, water. So we oh, we do now, though. It's actually been snowing for about 24 hours now. So uh, we, do, we do have a little bit of, of snow going on. Hey, hello, welcome. Let's see, run through real quick. John, Tenemotive, Hassem, I'm going to call you Magic, <laughs> Clark, Johnny, JDCAMC, Dr. Architect, Gamborg, welcome back, Barry, Cowboy USA, uh, no, that doesn't, that doesn't count, Vitaly, you don't get to say that, we know Aaron prompted you on that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> But welcome, welcome everybody. We're gonna have a, a fun day today, I think. Well, one way or another, we'll have fun. I don't know, I, I, won't, I won't put more adjectives on it than that. It'll be fun, if nothing else. So uh, I hope everyone is having a great Friday so far. Um, I know this is what I look forward to all week, is a chance to do this, and I apologize for not being around last week. I was actually sick the weekend before I caught the flu or something, fever, coughing, that kind of thing, uh, and uh, thought I was feeling I was feeling okay. But by the time the week went on, I was just exhausted. So it was sit here and do a so-so job of modeling something live, or just take the week and come back a hundred percent next time. So here I am at eighty percent, guaranteed ish. So we will, uh, this will be, this will be fun. This should be a good time. Uh, low bike, bike volume. Oh, that's where we're at. All right, hold on. I can bump that just a little bit. See how that goes. All right, that's, uh, that's better. On my end, I'm, I'm pushing into the yellow. So hopefully that, hopefully that works okay. I don't have a whole lot more to, I don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> They're almost burying the needle. So we're here, we're back, it's Friday. We're gonna model something. Uh, just let y'all know, I did create a forum thread for this. So as we go through here, if you guys find good pictures of details of the Christchurch Cathedral or specific portions we're modeling, uh, if you throw them on here, I will actually be able to get to them. Uh, as opposed to like messaging or emailing or something like that where uh, I can't grab them as easy. So yeah, if you uh, have something you want to share, this is the spot to do it. And if you're not already there, forums.sketchup.com is where you can get there, uh, get information on this model and get information on all things SketchUp. So with me today on the other end, I decided to, to rumble through that intro apparently a little too quickly because I neglected to say hi to Casey. Hello, glad to be back. So Casey's going to help out with comments and uh, remind me that uh, when I'm being a rude host and ignoring all my guests. <laughs> um, oh, I got I to share something because this was, this was cool. And, and those of you who've been around for a while and watching these will appreciate some of this. So we regularly get stickers made at SketchUp. Uh, most of the time they are, well, SketchUp stickers, logos, the name, SketchUp, uh, that sort of thing. You get different sizes and, and different types. 
but this time we actually got something cool, which we, I don't know that we've done this before, but we got stickers made of SketchUp models. And we got six of them made, and they were almost all from our live models. So the, the first one was a, a teeny tiny Empire State Building. Here, I'll, I'll hold it up here because I think this will be the easiest way to see this. But there's a little Empire State Building model. That's from one of our live sessions. Uh, the Burj. This was, a, this was a fun one, if you guys remember that. That turned out pretty cool uh, in sticker form. And much bigger than those two is a Big Ben. Here, I'll, pa I'll pass these under here. I don't know if you've seen these before yet, Casey. Uh, no, I've not uh, seen there them. There you yet. go, right under there. And that, so those are the three buildings. Should be right on that monitor. And then we had some vehicles too, which is kind of cool. So this is the, was the helicopter. You guys remember doing that? Made with all native tools, no extensions. That was a cool one. And then going, this is a ways back. This is a while ago. But this uh, was the pirate ship, which was really cool. This, this is kind of weird. This is the most viewed far and away of all of our live models. It's got something like 200,000 views. Um, it ended up on some playlist somewhere. And... Uh, yeah, like a quarter million views of the pirate ship, which is, is kind of cool. And then the last one, this wasn't a live model, but you guys know I have a, I have a special place in my heart for this model, and I was, I was pretty stoked to see this get made into a sticker, but this is the Millennium Falcon. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> like getting somebody decided to make your, your baby into a sticker. So <laughs> I feel good about this. This is the only one that I actually ended up putting on my laptop. The rest of them... Uh, are great, but I figure if I put three stickers of my models I made on my laptop, it would be a little narcissistic. So I just went with the Falcon. But uh, yeah, so if you guys see us at any events, we have a couple coming up, WorkbenchCon at the end of the month. We're prepping for AIA. Uh, and of course, 3D Base Camp uh, in September, you'll probably get be able to get your hands on some some stickers there. And maybe we'll do, we'll do a... Uh, some kind of a contest in the near future where maybe you can get some SketchUp swag. We haven't done one of those for a while, so. Um, yeah, <laughs> Gambor says we're missing the save sticker. <laughs> uh, stickers aren't big enough for that. I need something that uh, goes on the front of my screen too for that, so the, my laptop cover won't. Well, you can see, my laptop cover is actually already several stickers deep, so. Got to go way back there to find the original silver of the actual Mac. But, uh, but yeah, so right there, there's, the, there's my Falcon. Okay. So I just thought that was fun. I wanted to, wanted to share that. We, we try to spotlight something before we get rolling, and, and that, that ended up being today was those stickers came in like uh, day before yesterday, and I thought that was exciting. Okay. Uh, Oh, Cowboy USA is chiming in on all of his models that he's been here for. <laughs> That's right. This is this 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 thick layer of stickers is actually uh, structural. It keeps it from getting injured. <laughs> okay, so now that we did that, let's uh, let's do what we're here for. Let's model something, and that something we actually know exactly what that's going to be. That is going to be. The Christchurch Cathedral. So I got a couple pictures uh, off the internet. So if you guys don't know about this, the uh, let's open an Illustrator. This isn't what I intended to do at all. Um, <laughs> but this is where my computer. When my computer starts to do something, it's best to just sit back and let it do its thing, lest someone get hurt. Um, the Christchurch Cathedral was actually has a history of being damaged by earthquakes every 20 years or so an earthquake seems to hit and damage the spire but then uh, several years back it was almost completely demolished by an earthquake and it sounds like and, and i don't want to claim to be a historian because i just spent a little time on wikipedia but it sounds like for the last decade or so they've been trying to decide if they're going to knock it down or rebuild it and uh, it sounds like they finally came to the agreement they were going to uh, fix it up, rebuild it. So that's kind of cool. So we're not uh, part of that actual rebuilding, but we're going to go ahead and model the way it was originally. 
Um, so I have this file I saved apparently as an SVG file. I didn't catch that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screen capture in Illustrator this image to my desktop. That way I don't have to open Illustrator to get that image. All right, so here we go. Now I got now I have a PNG. I better move this trash so I don't accidentally open it again. Uh, this is kind of the layout of the building. I thought that was that was kind of nice. Um, the rest of it, I couldn't find solid plan. I mean, you guys might be able to come up with something. I found like two hand drawn pictures uh, that were plans. This <laughs> this one is very very small. Apparently, I may have I may have drawn in. I think I saved the thumbnail of an image rather than the actual image. Oh, not getting off to a good start, everybody. <laughs> uh, don't worry, we'll get there. <laughs> nowhere to go but up. Um, but the big part that I was going to actually plan on modeling off of were, were some images because uh, I was able to find some, some pretty solid imagery uh, like this one. And then uh, it's an older picture, but very good picture very solid so we'll work off of that maybe we'll even maybe we'll kick this off with a photo match because i think this this is actually a decent image for uh, doing match photo on so maybe that's what we'll do we'll start with this photo in match photo and do the initial blocking in 3d and then uh, we'll work from there and uh, uh, build this build details in that sort of thing um, I was actually saying it's it's not a very complicated building, honestly. It's you'd see it's it's fairly simple structurally. It's got a, a big piece here, got the tower here. Um, even the tower's not terribly complex, but as with a lot of you know cathedral type architect is is cathedral a type of architecture? I don't think that counts as a type uh, of architecture. I think it's called Gothic architecture, but I'm not entirely sure. That sounds have right. To look it up. I'm not brave enough to use terms like that because I'm afraid I'll sound like I need help sounding dumb. Um, but yeah, so this, this it, it does saying that it has a lot of details. So this is pretty far out, but just the window has just multiple levels. So we're just going to hop right in and start blocking it out and start building up details like we do. And we'll just see how far we get in the next couple hours and uh, see how much of this we get in here. So I'm not looking for... Uh, specific exact dimensions on anything. I'm not. I don't have a dimension plan that I'm building off of. I want to make this model. Um, I'll probably just make it fairly large to begin, put details on, and then maybe we'll scale down based on like the front door size or something like that. It is gothic. Okay, Caden Wilson confirmed for us that this is in fact gothic style architecture, which is cool. I mean, knowing that is cool. Not, not that it's gothic is cool. It's, it can be whatever it wants. It's a classic building. Um, all right. So I think, like I said, I'm going to start with this one right here. And we will go ahead and photo match this thing. So this is 747. And I'm going to close the rest of these. And we will hop back in here. And I'm going to go to File and Import. Let me grab that, and I'm not import as image. I'm going to bring it in as a new matched photo. So anytime you do that, it brings in your image, and it gives you your uh, handles to set your vanishing points. So I'm going to use the ridge line right here as one line. And this, this is not that important. The length of your line really doesn't matter. Some people try to get this lined up just perfectly like that. It really doesn't matter. I would suggest going long so you can actually see that line line up with the image and just grab those ends like that. And then we'll grab another one that's down further. I'm going to grab, go to this line down here, this lower roof eave right here. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, like that. Going this direction, we have a couple lines we can choose from. I'm going to try to use something high up if I can. So maybe this line right here on the, the spire. And then something further down. Maybe I'll grab these lines right here. Let's see how, see how it lines up if I do that. No guarantees.
Now I think I'm gonna use this line right here on the front. It's those, those are a little too choppy. I can't tell exactly if I'm lined up or not. I'm gonna use this line right here on the front of the main, it's the sanctuary. Does anybody know what the name of these different parts of the building are? All right, so I'm gonna take this, stick it down right here on the corner. Actually, no, I wanna line it up with this corner. Oh yeah, and look at that. Look how nice and see how that, that blue line is directly lined up with that corner. So what I'm doing is I'm dragging it right here so it goes into this alcove and then that becomes the outside corner here. And because the angle we're shooting at, it, it actually lines up pretty well with the middle of the spire too. So when I drag this point down here to where I, about where the ground is and line that vertical line up, look how that lines up right with that line. That is a good sign. That means my photo match is pretty well lined up. If you do this and your vertical lines and that blue line aren't quite right, that's usually an indicator that maybe you need to go tweak your red and green handles a little bit to get that vertical. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is, before I go any further, is I'm gonna click on the blue axes, so you get that little vertical handle there, and that lets me zoom in and out. So again, I'm not working to exact scale. I, I'm not going back on saying that, but I do want to get approximately where Mark down there in the bottom is the right size. So he's, he's like here, that's too big, that's giant Mark. So we want him small enough that he could actually walk in the door. There's a, actually a person standing right here. So I can kind of scale him up so that Mark is about the same height as that person over there. I know it's, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, we're working on a ballpark. So we'll say right about that tall. I think that's a person. That might be the back end of a horse. Oh yeah, here's a person. See, even smaller. That is a, a horse, I think. So we'll bring Mark down a little bit more. All right. With that, I'm gonna come to my match photo window and click done. All right, now I need to start blocking in some geometry. So I'm going to, I wanna start with uh, one piece, well here, I'm gonna start, I'm actually gonna start right here and come up to about here, come over here on the red axis and drop that back down. All right, that gives me the first surface there and I'll push that through to there. All right, so that's the beginning of my tower and now I might, Let's see, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to, I'm going to take this up tall. Um, it can be hard. So when you're, it looks like I'm drawing on top of geometry, which I'm actually not. I'm not drawing on geometry now. All I'm drawing on is, uh, I'm drawing in SketchUp just like I normally would. It just has this image kind of onion skinned over the top. So it can be difficult to snap off axes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run a line up high like this and then drop that back down just to get a flat working surface right there. Um, and then I will draw some lines like this, just getting that initial geometry. There we go, like that. And then I wanna keep this symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually come out. This is what I'm looking at right now. I picked a point that it looked like it lined up, but I know this is not correct. Um, it's, it was actually the center of the tower, which may be correct. I don't know, I have to go look at the drawing again, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. I'm gonna take this and see what happens when I flip it around. So that actually goes into the building. So, so um, we've got a first question of the day. Um, is this a native tool? So far, I have only used native tools. Uh, what, Match Photo is part of just standard old vanilla SketchUp. So uh, the Match Photo tool can be found, uh, depending on your menu, it's usually under Import, I believe? Correct, yeah. That's right. It's a very useful tool in my opinion oh, it's, and often underutilized. It is a great tool. All right, so here's what I was hitting. All right, 
let's see if that works. If I grab that line and line it up there, not quite. Oops, this is a spot where a uh, 3D mouse is actually kind of dangerous. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as you orbit in any kind, in any way in match photo, it, it drops the match photo because you have to be looking at the, the photo from the specific viewpoint for it to line up correctly with the axes you've created. So anytime, as soon as you orbit out, it goes away. And that's basically the only thing a 3D mouse does is, is orbit. So you can zoom in and out just by rolling the, the middle mouse button. So I'm just, just going back and forth like this. Um, you can zoom in and out, but you can't actually do any zooming or uh, any orbiting or it, you will lose that. All right, so I think if I go right there and then scale that, scale that down I think that looks pretty That's good. That's going to work for now. All right, so once again, we come back to this. You know what? This is another thing. This is my five cents worth of free advice. Every time, so it creates a scene. Every time I hit that scene, it goes to that scene. So as a default in here, if I go to animation and I look at my settings, it tells me to enable scene transition. So every time I jump back to this match photo, it's going to spend three seconds. Even if I'm real close, it's going to spend three seconds rotating to it. So I'm going to turn that off. That way I could be over here and click this and it'll just jump me right back. All right. Yeah, it's a good tool for animations, but not so great for a match photo, I suppose. Yeah, it's not the best. Um, it depends on what you're doing, really. All right, so I got a couple things happening now. One thing is I'm going to actually take this and I'm going to scale it down just a teeny bit smaller because this actually has like a lip that comes up around the front uh, frame. I don't know. I don't know. What, I, I, I'll, I'm going to make, I'm going to, fair warning, I will make up architectural names of things that I don't <laughs> know what they are. So just so we're all on the same page. Okay, so like something like that, and then I'm gonna take this and I'm going to make a copy and copy it back like that. All right, there we go, and then. I, I'm impressed we've been going for a while and no questions about the 3D mouse yet. <laughs> oh, and wait, hold on, let me, let me review. I've got this much geometry on the screen and no one has said the S word yet. <laughs> oh. I'm not going to say it either. <laughs> All right. Fine, since you guys are going to tell me to, I'll save on my own. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have saved. Ooh, JDC, you're, you're close. I think, I think I beat you, though. I think I, I think I was able to hit save before you said to save. Actually, I know I was. Cause I got a 10 second delay between, you know, anyhow. All right, let's jump back over here. So we're getting the initial geometry in here. Um, some other big pieces I want to put in. I have uh, over here, it looks like I got a, whew, this is gonna be fun. So I have like an oct octagonal tower sticking out of the roof right here. That's interesting. And then that kind of blends into whatever this little doorway <laughs> is right here. So I'm going to guess where that would die back into this. I'll come here. All right, so in plane, I'm just drawing. Oops. Stand. Oop. Hey, come on. Got some red axes. I'm just drawing arbitrarily, drawing some lines like this to create a rectangle. All right, something's uh, red axes, green axes, whatever. 
Now let's try that again on the green axis this time. So I want to just get a rectangle on this wall in plane that I can pull out to the front here. So what I can do now is I can see, all right, well, that's not wide enough. That block needs to go back deeper this way. So what I can do is I can grab this, come out of my match photo, grab here, use push-pull, come back over here, and I'll say start my push-pull from here and pull it out to there. And then if I put a line straight up the middle. That's clever. I'll take this, shift run that back till it hits this surface here. And then I will, all right. And now I can just, and I'll come out here. Take this right here, slide, actually we'll just push pull. Oh, great. That's what I get for trying to be clever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we can tie that back to there and that back to there. All right, so still massing. Um, there's, I will probably do the same thing I did over here pull this out like about like that and then I'll grab this option copy it back to uh, give me geometry to create that lip so um, thing. in response to another question we just got um, it looks like uh, there is another question about what tool you're using right now and it's called the match photo tool and it's actually not an add-on it's a default tool packed in with SketchUp it's yes. just uh, native tools no extensions yet today, but I have a feeling we will end up using some sooner or later. I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> it will happen eventually. Um, all right. And uh, let's see. I think that's everything for now. If I missed anyone, go ahead and just repost your question and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Yes. All right. Now... I wonder, I, let me, let me see, let's save, hop back out here and look at, no, that's, that's not, that doesn't help much with the view of that, oops, octagonal piece back here, can't really see it, that's okay, I'm, fully comfortable making things up. So I'm going to try this. I'm, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to triple click and make this a group because I'm going to create geometry that I don't want to yet merge with the main section. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a polygon. I believe it looks like it's an eight-sided polygon. So I'm going to come here on the ground. That facing the right way. I think the so. Flat is towards the front. Whoops, I alt tabbed. No. Right, so let me rotate that so that this flat is towards the front. And then I will pull this up. And let's see how that looks. Not bad. Well, not, that's not too bad. Um, it looks like it needs to be a little bit just slightly bigger. And slightly taller. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. I'm going to grab that right there. I'm actually come out. I was going to try to do it from that view. So I'm going to scale it about the middle. So I'm going to hold on my modifier key to scale, scale from the middle. A little bit bigger. Let's see. Overshot it. All right. Oh, so close. <laughs> Half that. So let's see, so, that was... Uh, we've got a question. Uh, what cathedral are we modeling? I believe it's uh, the Christchurch Cathedral in, I think you said it was New Zealand? Uh, yes. You guys buy that? It is the Christchurch Cathedral. Well, it, that, that's what it's supposed to be anyways. <laughs> we will see if we get there. <laughs> All right, still a little too big. So I know I'm doing a little bit of guessing just because we don't really have 
a very good photo of this. So there we go. That's going to be enough. That's going to be perfect because that's as much as I'm going to do. That'll work. All right, so totally I'll take that. <laughs> Acceptable at the very least. All right, so that's going to go to there for right now. I'm going to come back and do the spires in a minute. Um, I'm going to rough in this right here by, let's see. Let's put one line right there. And from that one line, I'm going to get my four lower towers. I'm going to take, oops, I'm good. I'm good with this now, so I'm going to explode that back out. So I'm going to take this line right here. I'm going to copy it to here and then make a rectangle between those two points. And I'll take that option copy to here and I'll take both of them, copy it here. And now what I want to do, I don't know if this is right yet. So what I'm going to do is just on one of these, I'm just going to grab that point. I'm just going to make an X and I'm going to pull it straight up and go hop back in here and see how. <laughs> you know, <Beautiful>. just. <laughs> All right. I was legitimately surprised that that turned out. I mean, that's. <sighs> of course. Yeah. So, you know, that's how you do that. Um, what I was expecting to have happened there. <laughs> Let me, let me make that not right. Okay, so if I had something like this, my goal, was, my, my plan was to come in and use move to just move that point vertically. So stick on the blue axes till it got to there. And then, yes, 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 I heard all those cap lines or caps. Uh, it's being strongly recommended that I create components for this. And I 100% agree. Absolutely. So now that I've got this, and it's perfect on the first try. I'm gonna go ahead and make it into component. And I'm gonna call this the lower spire. There I go, I told you I was gonna make up some stuff. All right, and now I wanna copy that to each of the four corners. But I don't wanna just move it like I did the square because this right here is where the detail is gonna be, right? So I have some detail where it drops down and meets the spire. Um, I don't remember if this had windows or anything like that, but I want these two faces to be on the outside all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line like this real quick. And I don't actually even need, well, I'm gonna keep it. Let's leave that. Grab this one, start the middle, click here, option. Uh-oh, something's weird. Yes, because I kind of arbitrarily pushed this into uh, existence. I did not make sure this was actually square. So now I get to fix that. Um, <laughs> uh, hey guys, welcome, welcome back Red. Hope, hope you are having as good a day as, well I peaked, I mean, pulling that spire up to the perfect height on my first try, this can only go downhill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I have to do is I wanna get this to be square um, based on my push pull or, or on, my, on my view here. Oh, look at that. That's actually way off, isn't it? So I might actually just push pull, come over here. Whoops. Pull that back in a little bit. See if that gets me closer. Man, got all proud and I had to get humbled. I was I'm all braggy and showing off there. All right, so I'm gonna hold on to the spire because I still think it's good. Let's see if I move it back in like that. Mm, it's not as good as it was before. We can fix that. Um, what I need to do is I need to get these two pieces to the same size. So I'm just gonna grab a line like that and I'm gonna use option to spin it this way. Oh man, I'm pretty close. So very close. Let's see how far off was that? Three inches. Yeah, Not too that bad. That was really close. That's close. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so now we got an issue with this because it's not the right size. Um, dang it. It was so good too. All right, so <laughs> if I come back over here and look at what I got to do to fix it, it looks like this comes back to the right size. So I really think that I just kind of have to pull that up like that and that's going to get me close. That of course isn't going to work. Well, actually, yeah, well, I'll make it work. Because if I come into this, I get rid of all these other sides. Then I can just take this one new side, rotate it 90 degrees. Oh no, because now it's non-symmetrical. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so what I really need is I want to keep my peak point. I can delete these two lines and then I can just connect. No, that's not going to work either. Okay. All right, everybody just relax. Everybody just <laughs> chill. We're good. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing it over again. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of this component. I'm going to get rid of this. I want to keep this line. This is the line I know is correct. The rest of these don't matter. So all I really have to do is take this point right here, flip it over like that, throw a square in like that, and then like I did before, just draw my X right here. Remember that series on drawing pyramids? This is like one of the six or nine ways we came up with, with that. So I'll do that and then hop over here. And as expected, it wasn't perfect. So I now we'll pull that up the blue axes to right about there. All right, now I'll take that, make that into a component. I'm gonna call it lower spire again. It's gonna prompt me and say, you already have a lower spire. I wanna replace it with this one. All right, now, now that I know that I'm on a square, I can take this from the middle point of this line, bring it around 90 degrees, three X, and there we go. All right, got scared it was all falling apart, but we, we saved it. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, then we got kind of this balcony thing and then set back a little ways. Actually, it kind of looks like this just goes up from there. Um, I'm gonna come in here and create a line straight up that I will take to we'll go to that high and then see what this looks like. Yeah, it looks like it, that needs to go back just a little bit. See how it's, it's lapping up down here lower, but then it gets tighter as it goes up. So that tells me that what I need to do is just take this piece right here and scoot it back in, um, which I can't just move it straight back. Oh, well I can. So um, I tend to do this a lot. I'll start my deformation while I'm in match photo, and then I will hop out into the, or, or outside of match photo and then hop back into match photo to actually get the, the planes to line up. That's just easier for me to get everything where it needs to be. So. I'm going to take that, option, rotate that 90 degrees, 3x, and then if I was to connect these lines together, let's see how this all looks up against the match photo. So at this point, you guys probably caught this, I'm really only using match photo uh, as confirmation. I'm not really using it as, I'm not actually modeling in the match photo. All so right. We've got a question from our Facebook stream. Um, what's the command for multiple copying using the protractor tool that you were using? I believe that's just the array command using the rotate tool. 
Right. Yeah, so I did, I, I grabbed one piece. I used the rotate tool. Uh, I started to move it. I hit the modifier key. That's option on Mac, control on Windows. And then put that first copy where it needs to go. And then after it's been placed, you type the number of copies you want and then the letter X. So in this case, I put it 90 degrees and then I just said uh, 3X and that gave me my original plus three copies was one on each of the four sides. I find that saves a lot of time personally, oh, yeah. getting to know the modifier keys, I mean. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't, if, if you're just starting out or not even if you're regardless of your usage, uh, keep an eye down here as you're using different modify commands. Very few modify commands do one thing. <laughs> Almost all of them, in fact, I think it's safe to say they all have alternative functionality, uh, which is close to their original functionality, but it's, it's usually triggered by hitting a key at some point in the workflow. So keep an eye down there and uh, you'll know exactly what that is. Um, all right, I, I gotta keep massing. I, I, wanna, I wanna draw details, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna, I probably won't wait long. No, I, I, it'll, it'll probably be like five minutes from now and you'll be like, uh, aren't you still massing? All right, so I'm gonna hop back over here. Uh, we did, uh, that is, SketchUp did a project a few years back for, it was a Maker Fair or something like that, where we created models of Washington, D.C. buildings. So buildings that were... I that. That was a lot of fun. It was very cool. So it had a base that was all cut out of uh, rigid foam, as CNC'd, and then the rest of the building, or, or the, the, a lot of the buildings then were uh, 3D modeled 3d modeled and 3d printed and uh, they ran lights into the 3d printed building portion and uh, hooked, hooked them up to arcade buttons so you could actually sit at a display and say you know show me the jefferson monument and then the little building would light up it was really cool it was for, for educational kind of show what, you, what could be done with sketchup for education was, was kind of the idea i think um, but I remember doing a lot of those models, and uh, I did a couple churches that are in DC, and they had a lot of these same uh, geometries, like this, this, this corner piece right here. That was all over those buildings. It's really, really interesting. And that's, I guess, that's the whole idea behind a specific style of architecture: is you repeat that. I guess maybe it's just my, my common no that sounds insulting it sounds like i'm insulting myself but what i'm used to is you know houses they're kind of kind of boring to do the same thing over and over again uh i don't know i just started rambling i don't even know where my thought was going with that guys so i apologize um this looks like it has i'm not 100 percent sure about this so that's why i'm not let me explain what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to model that nine or 45 degree cut because i think yeah see that's what that does right there it actually cuts through like that so this geometry that i'm creating right here this will actually repeat multiple times at least here here and here it looks like in back something slightly different happens but at least on these three side or these two sides uh, this geometry will repeat um, so i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna take this i do like using rotate a lot for uh Repeating geometry. Again, probably something you've already caught. Oops. And I take advantage of SketchUp's merging geometry whenever possible as well. Looks good, but this does look like it has to go up a little higher, so I'm just going to move that straight up. And, excuse me, Mark. I'm going to grab this. I've asked this before. I do it all the time. I'm rotating to look above something. My head kind of moves up and over the model. 
Turns out in reality, you can see it the same from every direction because the uh, screen doesn't move, but biofeedback modeling. Sounds like a thing. All right, so I'm gonna make this into a component also. Here's a question. Does anybody know what that piece is called? That, that column-y kind of corner, because at this point, if you don't have a better name, I'm gonna call it the corner column. What, what do you got? Who saved me? Um, if anybody knows the actual term for that piece on the outside. Um, hmm. No, I don't got anything. Seen any. <laughs> got an emoji of a mouse? Well, that's not going to help. All right, so I'm going to call this the spire corner. Oh, hold, hold, hold. Contrace buttress. That sounds good. Uh, typo in there. Yeah. Everything should have spell checks. I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we're calling it a buttress. Whether or not that's perfect name or not, I don't know, but we've uh, apparently decided. All right, so I'm gonna copy this one over like this, and then rotate it. that and same thing here grab this one move it straight over rotate it all right let's see how that lines up we've got consensus everybody's agreeing that that is a buttress awesome that was pretty that's pretty cool I like that that is a, a neat looking model thus far all right well let's get our buttress and gear and put some more of these in here <laughs> um i got a couple of them over here i'm definitely noticing that we don't quite have alignment between our model and the match photo uh, some of that's okay because some of this is where we're going to have this this rail kind of thing rise up some of it i'm wondering if it's just an old building and not quite square anymore. Um, but this one's the biggest part that I'm, I'm struggling with. I want it to be squarer, but it's not. But I'm gonna work with it. We're gonna, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make everything okay. All right, so I'm gonna start right here, come across like this, drop that to the ground. Hold that one down like that. And then I will just take that whole thing. Actually, I can cut it right here. And pull that out like that. And then put that little buttress topper right there. <laughs> and then I'll go right here, pull this piece out to here. And same thing, I can cut like this, and then I'll just move that line back there. I think that works. So any place that I, I'm going to draw this in, uh, I can, if I know I'm going to come back and put additional detail on it, I'm going to try to make it into a component. So this in particular, I may come back and actually put like these uh, tile segments. I may create that. Uh, I'm sure I'll have this step out here at least, this one here, and maybe even come in and do this zipper brick <laughs> relief. <laughs> I'm 90% sure that's not the right term for that, but I'm sure. I'm, I'm loving these terms so far. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Write this down. Um, I, I'm guessing that's not right, but does anybody know that? It's it's a cool pattern. I really like that look. Um, I'm assuming it's not really called uh, zipper bricks, <laughs> but does anybody know what that's called? Because it looks like what it is is these pieces right here, every other brick, we've got alternating bricks that are maybe they're like smooth concrete, and then these ones look more like they're maybe textured or something like that. But uh, yeah, anyhow. Excuse me again, Mark. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of my extra lines here. 
Oh, Sebastian says coin. Is that the answer to what those things are called? Or did you just offer me insult? All right, make components. And I'm going to call this building buttress. B U I L D I N G. Awesome. And then I'll take that option, copy that straight across the red axes to right there. Um, it's looking good so far. Now I'm going to save because I like, I like what's happening here. Me too. Definitely talking about a coin. Is that, am I saying that right? Q-U-O-I-N, coin? Coins. Yeah. Duh. It's coins. Everybody knows that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> Maybe now's a good time to point out that Casey and I are not architects. <laughs> no. I studied to be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> not me. Um, I was smart. I was going to be an artist. Oh. See, see how that worked out. <laughs> well, you All are right. doing something kind of artsy that, today. That's, that, it's something. All right. I'm going to come over here. Uh, and I'm going to make... Oh, we got it. First Woo! question about uh, the uh, what, what, how far are we the in? 3D mouse. How far are we? 50 minutes in. Aaron Powell was so off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Full, full walk for you because you're the first to ask. This right here is my 3D mouse. It is the Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. Uh, so this offers the ability to quickly and easily, smoothly animate in 3D. It's not a requirement. You don't have to have one in order to run SketchUp. Uh, it is a nice presentation tool. And that's what I use it for is to show people SketchUp. Normally, most of the viewing is done with your wheel on your mouse. So normal user of SketchUp sees this, and this is normal. This is how what people get used to. I like to use it for as a presentation as we're looking at things. It's a little bit smoother. It's a little more graceful. Uh, it's a little bit quicker, and it actually offers a whole bunch of shortcut keys and the ability to use your mouse for other things while you're or orbiting. Excuse me. Um, Sorry, we didn't mean to laugh when you asked that. We had a little pool going about how long <laughs> it would be till someone uh, asked what that thing in my left hand was. So, yeah, as I'm far gonna, as I know, no money was exchanged. But. I'm going to go ahead and post a link in chat so you can check out the website if you're interested in getting one. All right. So, I made a copy of this component over to here. Um, I don't want to oh, manipulate. Um, to answer the question, oh. yes, the question was from a different streaming site. Oh. Uh, we have three going all at once. <laughs> That's and, true. And uh, we have a Sometimes program that correlates it all together so I can see it. So I'm just trying to respond as quickly as I can to each one. But yeah. yes, that, that was from Facebook. Javier on Facebook was asking. Uh, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make it unique. When you make it unique, it gets a new name and a new identity. It doesn't pop up and ask you what you want to call this new component. So something you might want to do if you do use that shortcut is to just come over here under your entity info because it's, it's, I still call it, now it just added pound one. So I'm going to instead call it my short building buttress. And with that, I'm going to take this piece on the top slide it vertically down to here. Um, and then I'm going to take this one, this face right here, and I'm going to push it. When you, I'm just using move at this point. I'm constrained to the green axes and move it back. Like that. Move this vertically. And move this back, the green axes to here. All right. So we've got another move. question uh, from Facebook of how long do we usually go? And we usually start at 12 and go till about 3 or 3.30, depending on how the model is going. Yeah, last time we did this, 
we did Baby Yoda, and we actually ended fairly early for us. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason was I really wasn't feeling so hot. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to admit weakness weakness in front of anybody, but uh, I'm glad you're doing better today. I did go home and uh, ended up with in bed all of that weekend. So. But I got through the model. That's the important part. I, didn't, I don't feel like I cut corners. I <laughs> felt like what got done turned out totally acceptable. In a good way, not like in a acceptable, like, no, that was that worked kind of way. All right. Um, all right, so this is coming together. I feel good about the massing. I am, so you guys may have caught this too. Uh, I don't, because of my lack of good uh, photo reference, I don't have great photos of what's happening in the rest of the model. Um, it looks like something happens here. This connects to more pieces. But again, I don't really have a solid view of that. Um, so I can look at this one and go, nope. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happening over there. Um, okay, so this makes it look like, oh, there's another section further back. That's what we're seeing here. This is behind these two buildings. Another piece that goes across, because if we look at this. Oh, yeah, there it is. Somebody... Uh, honestly, no idea what I'm looking at right here. Was this the wrong one? This is Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> Still where we're at. Yep. Okay. Um, oh yeah, this is different too. There have been renovations. Oh, this is the joy of doing things live. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen next. Prepping. Uh, so yeah, we can see that this is actually, the front entryway is different on this model, or on this photograph than it was on the, the more recent photo. So I'm assuming that means they've put, uh, put that there. I like Ben's suggestion. He says it has to be the same on the other side, otherwise the building will fall over. Yeah, that sounds logical. I buy that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got. I did have recommendation on other channels that I should be consuming tea and honey, lemon, and garlic to make myself feel better. So that's an interesting flavor combination right there. Yeah, I assume you're not supposed to have it all at once, but. <laughs> All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume something like that is what's supposed to happen here. And heck, I will, I will even do that one more time. Yeah, so we'll put that right like that. Okay. All right, so we're almost about done with the big massing. Um, I'm going to do something about this, this tower over here. I'm going to select this piece right here, and then I'm going to come out like this. And then I'm going to offset and pull that offset out. There we go. And then I'll push pull that up. Why did that not all? Go grab that, uh, push pull that vertically, like that, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll come over here like this. I'm going to pull this up too because I'm just going to try to get one solid here for this tower and get rid of these extra pieces. I do want to call out the fact that you guys may have caught her on the intro slide. 
We did uh, swap Mark for Laura, who is our scale figure for 2020. Um, because I was sick, and then we actually had a couple snow days where the office wasn't open, and I, I never, I'm never quite as uh, productive at home as I am here, but I have not had a chance to migrate into 2020. I'm hoping that by next week, I will, I will be ready. I'll have that. that. That'll be my goal, is to get, get 2020 up and running by next week. That's a good goal to have. Yeah, it seems reasonable, right? It's actually <laughs> not, it's not a very, we, and we've talked about this too. Uh, you know what, actually, I want to keep that like that. Um, I like, one of the things I like is with the new version is I get to clean up. Uh, I, I have this recurring thing apparently where I'm talking about this and, and realizing I don't stop and uh, take care of things sometimes. And uh, that's definitely one of those spots that I don't clean up extensions that I'm not using. I don't uh, do that often enough. So it's kind of nice when I have a new version and it forces me <laughs> to spend some time getting uh, everything where it should be. All right, so I want to take this line right here, this kind of steps in a little bit, so I'm just going to do something like that. See how that shapes up. Right, whoop, whoa, 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 whoa. Got a little excited there. All right, let's see how that. It's looking good. Not too bad. All right, so now we'll take these two faces. From here, I'll go from one corner option to the next. 7x, because it's an octagon, that's a total of eight. And there's my witch's hat spire thing. All right, so this is not right. Now that I have all the pieces, though, I can select that ring. And from this view, I can scale, grab a corner, option to scale around the middle, and just pull that in until it lines up with the geometry. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm just going to say this, too, because well, I guess it's my job to say things. I don't have to give a reason. I'm going to say <laughs> this. Um, I, uh, I do like match photo a lot, but it's infrequent that I have a model where I can straight up just from that one view model everything. 90% of the time it's like this. I jump out, move some stuff, copy, move in. You know, basically this view ends up being a verification of the modeling I'm doing outside of the model. So, uh, just FYI, this is not a weird thing that's happening. This is actually kind of, kind of normal. All right. So this little thing right here, it's going to go up like this. And then I'm just going to draw some geometry in plane. Nope. That did not work out right. See how that looks. I just glued the wrong one. Whew. All right. Kind of just trying to draw what I think that's going to look like. All right. So there we go. I'm going to take that. Anytime I'm drawing something that's supposed to be uh, symmetrical. I try to do something along those lines. All right, and now there's a couple ways. So if I push pull this geometry, it's going to go straight. It goes normal to the surface. Um, if I want to get this geometry, same thing here, I can't really push pull this because it's going to come up at a weird angle like that. So if I want to have this geometry run down the rail like this, there's a couple things I can do. And this is one of those spots where I've made the joke about brute force modeling being, you know, we just do whatever you got to do to get it done. 
Um, but realistically, this is so simple to stitch these rectangles together that this is one of those spots where you could probably use something like if you had it loaded, uh, Enerot's upright extruder would work. Um, but it's such a simple profile that just doing it by hand, it's only a couple clicks. So uh, it's one of those spots where I don't, don't always stress about having an extension that does it in a single click if it's five clicks to just make the geometry. So something to think about there, I guess. I don't know. Um, so this looks like it does extend out just a little bit. So what I would probably do here, same thing again. Uh, yeah, joint push pull might work as well. I struggle sometimes with, with getting joint push pull to do exactly what I want, probably because I, I, I should, that's, that's on me. Um, but that would probably work. You could probably make joint push pull work too. If I had that profile and then I could do a vector push pull up there, that would work. The only issue with that is I think it would still end up, well, no, there's a couple ways because if I wanted to pull, I had that, sh that shape on the ceiling, that rectangle that it was angled that I wanted to come straight up, joint push pull would work perfectly there. Uh, it's pushing this way that you may have ended up with, no, joint push pull would work. I just Short answer, yes. Joint push pull would be a good solution there. Um, oops. And then one of the things I want to do is I want to keep this geometry as it was. Here, I'll just grab this line and copy that to this side. Um, because I want to take all of this And take all of this, copy it over like this. Flip along the green axes. Nope. Flip along <laughs> the red direction. There we go. And then I will take that and put it right there. Um, and I'm just going to assume that that is also down here. Flip along the red axes. Yeah, not quite as cool when you've already screwed it up once, but accept every victory. All right. There we go. Um, I have a thing going on here. I'm guessing I have an internal face, so I'm just going to look inside. Yeah, right there. Delete that. Mm, still got something wrong in there. There is what it is. So I need to actually get rid of this whole ring of geometry. This, I will say, is another one of my favorite parts of the 3D mouse, is you can just hop right inside of a model. It doesn't do the, you can do it with the uh, uh, regular mouse too, but it slows down as you get closer to a surface, so you have to kind of scroll, 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 push through, and then you're on the inside. Uh, 3D mouse, the zoom level is consistent to the amount of pressure you're putting on, so you just keep going forward and run through stuff. Uh, kind of a nice option. I guess this isn't going anywhere, so I'm just going to go ahead and merge all this geometry. I'm going to say intersect face with selection, and then I can come in here again, just like I have been doing, and get rid of these extra surfaces. Like that. Nope, that was the one I wanted to keep. All right. 
Again, keeping this a solid, you guys know, not actually a requirement, but it's something I try to make sure I do, keep my model solids if possible. All right, and then we have everything facing out. Okay, so we got this little piece all, all purdy. So we have something similar up here, uh, but this actually looks like it's got uh, kind of a, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I want to say it almost looks like a parallelogram, but I think it might be triangular going up there, up and over. So I'm going to model, I'm going to model something triangular. Um, it does look like it runs perpendicular to the surface, so I'm going to do something like that. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to draw a line perpendicular. that I uh, just had a question saying wouldn't it be better if you modeled with groups and components and a lot of times yes that is generally uh, the way I will start things but uh, if I do want my final model to be one solid piece I can't do that if different chunks are in groups and components. So I do actually have pieces that are, are these pieces are all components, these are components, uh, but the main geometry, what I eventually want to end up with is one solid. So as they'll, they'll start as components, but for my model, because the way I want to do it, I will actually bring them back together into one solid when I'm finished. It really depends on the function of what you're doing. If this was going to be a functional model that I wanted to take off bricks or doors or uh, buttresses off of, then I would probably keep them as separate pieces. In this case, I'm looking for a nice architectural model when I'm done, and uh, so I, I'm not too worried about, in the end, keeping this as separate, as separate pieces. All right, let's see how that looks. Not quite right. Uh, I'm going to back up because I think what's actually happening here is something like this. Ooh. So the heat's on in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. It just got super toasty in here. Wow. <laughs> All right. And I want to take that, that half. I'm going to use this. I'm going to rotate it along this surface right here to get that. I think that's closer to what I'm looking for. I'm gonna have that follow me up and over. Yeah, that's the stuff. That's closer. I see you got that lip now. Okay, cool. Wait, what's going on over here? Uh, that's gonna be an issue. What happened there? That's odd. Oh, right here. This is a problem. There we go. Whoops. Oh, nope. I want to keep that. <laughs> that piece is important. This is a little cleanup I did not do when I copied the those raily type pieces over. Uh, not a big deal though. All right. Uh, so that looks good. 
I'm going to go ahead and grab all that geometry I just created and put it on the other side too. So this can be fun, fun like hitting yourself in the toe with a hammer to get that precision geometry and grab exactly what you need. But uh, you know, do some some animating to get those that geometry out of there. All right, there we go. Looking good. And like I said, I'm assuming the front and back are the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And let's go look at what else we can add. So That's a good call to save. We were just getting someone from Twitch <laughs> telling us to do exactly I that. Know. I know. All right, um, I got this, I'm gonna call this a, a, a sub buttress. I don't know if that's real or not. Um, coming from the middle to about here. Uh, I got this. And again, I'm just drawing geometry in hopes of seeing what that looks like. Um, oh, I thought that was centered. That's not centered. That's why it was so off looking. Okay. Oh, I know why. Because this one's broken by the geometry. This one's not. Let me... So that now, no, it's still broken, isn't it? There we go. Now I have one line, so I should get my middle point still here. Oh, what? Oh, there we go. Now I got a line in the middle. All right, let's see if this lines up a little better. Oh, perfect. All right, so it's gonna come there. Dang it. 3D mousing, stop, gotta stop, gotta stop, man. All right, I'm gonna pull that out. Not far, to about there. And then it breaks around here. And then this comes out to here. All right, and then this is kind of weird because it does that same thing where it comes out like this. It looks like there's a little bit of a return before it, it, it breaks back. Um, it is on the forum. Uh, it's in the happenings category. Uh, somebody's asking on YouTube where they can <clears throat> find information about this live stream it is on the forum it is in the happenings area it's called live modeling christchurch cathedral um i'm struggling a little bit with how far this should come out should this come out further let me sort of mess with this yeah it should come out more like that i'm just gonna mess with this let me see how that looks. Not too far off. All right, let me, oh, I know what's gonna, okay, this is gonna change a little bit. I'm going to go there. Can, do I have the, space to turn this 90 degrees. Ooh, it's close, but it works. Awesome. And then this.
something like that, maybe. Yeah, something along those lines. Looking it's hard good. to tell when your entire detail is all of six pixels wide. Oh, extremely. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to take that now, take it over here. I'm going to nonchalantly flip it along the red direction. Okay, and I'm going to move that right here. I'm going to merge that all together. Go. And I'll make a new component out of that because I'm going to spin that around all four sides as well. So I'm going to call this a <laughs> sub buttress. And I'm going to take that, I'm going to use this point at the top of the tower. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, 3x. That's going to give me one of those on each of the four sides. Um, I do actually, after I did that, I realized that's the exact same thing that's happening right here. So this does actually go back more like this. Take that across, drop that down, drop this straight down till it hits the surface. There we go. Oh, baby. That's going to work. Ah, I love when geometry lines up right. Uh, it's such a good feeling. Cool. So um, <sighs> we've got a question. Uh, which Christchurch Cathedral are we doing? You know, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of the reason I don't. And even the, the, the reference images I have, it turns out, are from different Christchurch cathedrals. Some of them, there are ch Christchurch churches also. I don't know if that's a denomination. But uh, there are those. Um, here, this one, I don't know if I still have it open. But uh, if we come in here and we type in this one. So wait, is this the right one? Yes, this one. The New Zealand, the one that's in New Zealand, actually in Christchurch, New Zealand, uh, is the one we were looking at. And this is the one that's been affected by earthquakes throughout its existence um, and is currently in a state of disrepair, but hopefully soon repairing, it's being repaired. But you know what? As I'm looking at this right now, I don't know that that's the one that we're, is it? Let's see. I think it is. <laughs> you guys, I don't know what I'm doing. I think they changed the entrance at one point. Yeah, this this entrance looks that, different. That looks the rest new. of it looks the same though. The rest is the same though. As it far does as look we can like tell. yeah. This, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, almost had to quit and just go cuddle Baby Yoda and try again <laughs> next week. <laughs> uh, small meltdown. So there's one in Dublin as well which looks quite a bit different, but it does have similar uh, architecture. But yeah, so we are modeling an older version of the Christchurch Cathedral in New Zealand. Yes. All right, let's, let's keep working on this thing. Uh, um, like the Bob Ross of SketchUp. Hey, thanks, Chris Corey. <laughs> Let's go on here and model some happy little buttresses. <laughs> All right, so I got a thing here. Um, so here I have 
This is a cool detail because I think this this looks like it's actually so I got that same kind of octagonal octagonal geometry popping out where I'm assuming this is a 45 uh, little uh, balcony kind of thing that goes back into the bell tower. So I'm assuming this is like this is where the bell is in the bell tower, and this is like uh, you know where Quasimodo would live were <laughs> he from New Zealand. So. Um, I want to do I want to do that. I want to go to here. I'm gonna take a line straight out on the green axes that far, um, and then right here I'm gonna draw a line down. That's the edge of my octagon. All right, so with those two lines, again, this is, this is my general way of going about pulling geometry out of uh, the match photo. And then I'm gonna have that like that. I'm gonna take this line right here. I'm gonna rotate it, option rotate it, 45 degrees. And then take that now. And then we'll see how that lines up with the actual geometry. I did something wrong. No, I did exactly what I thought I did. It doesn't look like it quite lines up right. I don't know why that is. Looks like it goes over further. Definitely looks wider. I don't really know why, though. So I'm going to take these two faces, I'm going to pull each of them over nine inches, and look at it again. Okay, that actually. It's the same thing as before. This actually does come over a little bit further. So this edge of the white line is the outside of the balcony, which could actually be this over here also. I wonder if it goes all the way to the edge. That would make a lot of sense, right? So if I take this all the way to here and take this all the way to here, let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's what it is, something, something like that. All right, that's gonna be good enough for what I'm doing. And now we have inside of that, uh, this thing right here. All right, I'm just, again, tracing in plane some of the geometry that I want to reference, and then I'll hop out. So this is about where the pitched roof started on that bump out, and then this is about the, the, where the angled roof ran into it. So what I'm going to do now is take a line like this, and that's going to tell me exactly where uh, these two pieces meet up. And then if I was to go just straight out, down, back, like that, that should be half the profile of that piece. Yeah, so that looks pretty, that looks pretty good. So then I think what happens is I think this goes straight up like that. Uh, I'm gonna just copy this line right here to use as a ridge, like that. It's not quite, oh, because the ridge, well, let's see. I keep alt tabbing, I'm not sure why. Mm 
Okay, so the middle, hard to tell what that is. Is that like a tower that goes up? It looks like, oh no, that might just be on the ridge. It kind of looks like there's a ridge right here, which we can easily do, but it does look like it goes back against the pitch of the, <laughs> I'll tab again. It does look like it goes back against the pitch of the roof, so it's not straight across. So something like that, maybe. Okay, so some Sebastian's being smart, and he's actually looking at the way the shadows are falling. And I understand you said words, Sebastian, but I did not get what those words did for me. So the shadows come this way? This? Oh, you're saying this goes straight up because the shadow it's casting? Okay. We can do that. That's not a problem. Let's see, let's see what it looks like. So this would be straight up. Yeah, see, so it doesn't look, that doesn't quite look right. It looks like it does, so especially over here. I'm looking, I'm looking at this one for reference. It looks like it does kind of go back. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I won't hold you. I won't hold you responsible for anything, man. It's cool. So I'm, I'm going to go with this for now. It could always change. All right. Now what I got to do is get this copied over to make the other half. And all I'm going to do for that is grab the surfaces. I don't have to grab edges because edges create or define surfaces or faces, excuse me. So all I have to do is grab these. I didn't even actually need this one. I could get rid of that. And then I can select all this and it's still so hard for me, guys. All right. So I'm going to right now, again, take the surfaces right click make component and i'm going to call this the spire doorway whoa why am i yelling at me all right <laughs> spire doorway no i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna say copy that 90 degrees 3x and then we have one of those on each side so that's now ready to add that detail to, ooh, you know what I should have done? I should have made this part of this model, or part of this component. Easy enough to add. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna break it right here. I'm gonna grab those faces, Command X, and I can, cl I can clean this up right now. And I'm gonna come into this, edit, paste in place and now that comes in on all four sides again this is still rough geometry I'm not putting all the details in there but uh, this is good to kind of work work through adding all this all tabbed again okay I like this and I want to keep going with this little thing so I'm gonna come in here I think what happens I'm gonna grab three sides of that and offset them in. And then I think this pulls down kind of like that. And I think <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not, a, I'm just, I'm trying to copy what I think I see. That's definitely got to get smaller. I'm going to scale that about the middle. Whoops. Uh, something like that is happening. There's some Looking kind of detail over there. Again, 
it's 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 not a lot of a lot of details in there. So that's good though. That looks that looks okay. I think hey, I think what's happening though. I think this is like a handrail. Where's my human? Yeah. So I think this is actually set down. So there is a rail that goes around like this. It looks like it traces around the entire thing. So I'm going to do that all as one follow me in a minute. Um, right now, what I think is happening, I'm going to grab these three, offset them like that, trace this back like that, and I'm going to drop that down. Get that. Um, and then I think what I'll do is I'm just going to put a rectangle here and a rectangle here. Like that. And then what I can do is I can actually come back out here. And I don't actually need this geometry at all anymore. Well, I kind of do because I got to of that this is all one piece so um, how do I do this what's the best way to do this I mean I just pull that down like that Okay, that works. And then I just have to on these sides. So this is this is a trade-off. What's going to be the best way to do this between keeping components separate? Uh, I don't know that I have a great answer for that, but anyhow, that works right now. Cool. Now, I, I alt, alt tap. We just um, okay. The windows are missing, and that's the thing that's calling to me right now. Is I got no windows. Oh, fix those flipping faces, or my head's gonna explode. I don't think I have any reverse faces, do I? Um, said overlapping, but I'm not seeing any. Oh, straight yeah, away. that could be. Oh, wait, I could be wrong. I do have, so if I grab these and temporarily hide them, there's oh, probably yeah. some cleanup to do. Yeah, well, a little, maybe, oh, little bit, but not, not a ton. Some of that. I don't want to make your head explode, but some of that's not going to get cleaned up till I uh, merge all my geometry back together, which won't happen till I'm good with the amount of detail. All right. Did I do that weird? I did do that weird. Eh, it'll, it'll all work out in the end. So there, we shouldn't have fighting faces because my push pulls below. All right, window time. So one of the things I want to make sure I do here is keep everything centered. So I'm going to come find a middle point right here like that. That's my middle. And that middle, that middle is that the outside most, that middle point is out here on these bricks not here on these pushed in, pushed in, pushed in. So that's why it looks like it's a little out of plane from the middle because that's actually in a different, it is in a different plane. But I'm going to do something like Okay, so first thing I have going on is have that. 
And that is this first outside rectangular piece that pushes in. Um, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that rectangle and I'm going to uh, double click it to get the edges to and make that a component. And I'm going to call this my spire window. I'm going to make a copy of that. Actually, I'm going to just take the whole thing over here for a second. And now I'm going to make a copy of that over here. I'm going to flip that. And put those two together. And now I'm going to take both those, put them back right here. And trace the whole thing with a rectangle, which I'm going to get rid of. And I might as well do this on all four sides right now anyhow. So I'm going to grab this rectangle. Copy that 90 degrees, 3x. And then I can just delete, 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 delete. Um, and then I can take these guys right here, put it right back there, and then again, I need a shortcut that just says rotate 90 degrees three times. 90 degrees, 3x. Um, all right, so that that gets me my palette or my, my, my canvas on which to create my window. So what I do now is I can come in here and I can flip between the left side, the right side, or this view. So I, I actually have four different pieces that I can work from to get my offsets correct. This one makes the most sense right here because I can push this in and I can see how far in that's going to go. In theory, there we go. That's around there. Okay. Now, inside there, we have our first, oops, inside here we have Nope, a little further over. I also got to draw it from. What did I do? I'm not really sure what I did there. All right, try that again. Something was looking weird. I did. I did some weird things. All right, so I'm assuming that's lined up in the middle. That comes down to like here and drops to there. And then I'm going to use that geometry to get an arc in. I think I actually have to use uh, that arc will work. So I drew that out of out of context, didn't I? Grab that, Command X, double click in here, edit, paste in place, and then I'm going to take those lines and copy them over. Very nice. So now, again, basically creating templates as I go here. So what I can do now is I can take that, push pull that into where that goes. Offset that, drop it down to the next level, push pull that in, offset that one more time, 
and that gets push pulled away. Well, it's, this is where it starts to get hard to tell what's going on inside there. I'm going to do something like that. And then we have these uh, shutters inside there. But I think that's a pretty good start. One of the things that does happen, and it's, it's oh, 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 come on, man. It's kind of hard to see, but it does, these different ledges, they're not flat in like that. They actually do slope like that. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to take this line right here, I'm going to shift it up. I was thinking of trying to do this a consistent amount, but I think I'll just end up kind of making it look good rather than worry about any kind of precision. Draw a line across here to break this. I'm going to take that one straight up. All right, something like that. Uh, Hey, Tom Tom's on with us. Tom Tom is currently upstairs. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're lucky enough to actually have Tom Tom in Boulder this week. It's pretty, pretty sweet. He brought terrible weather with him. It's great to have him here. Um, hello. Hey, Dave's here also. How, how's everybody? So I can get rid of this and I can smooth these. Awesome. All right. Uh, Looks really good. It's getting there. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll actually create those shutters in there separate. Oh, I alt tapped again. One, two, three, four shutters. So I think I'll just kind of, man, I don't even know. I don't know what I'll do. I'll do something. Let me draw, draw a couple lines. All right. That's enough right there to get me the initial geometry I need. Like that. And then... I, don't know, I can just push pull that to give it a little bit of depth. And really, that's, I think, going to be good enough to. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. This does look like it goes all the way back in, though. It doesn't stop at some face. So let's, let's do that. I was unsure of myself there for a second. As sometimes I say things, and then I'm like, is that really what I want to do? That's about as far back as I can go. All right, so now exit out of there. And again, this is where I love my 3D mouse. Look at that, just get right under there. Push, pull that up, and it looked like that just went, yeah, something like that. I'm going to, I can only go back so far before this will start to hit the other sides. Um, so I want to actually look and see. I think that's where I'm, yeah, I'm right about where that's going to happen. So I'm going to take this, this geometry that I just created. I'm going to say intersect face with model. I'm going to triple click again to select all that collect connected geometry. And I'm going to make a component. And I'm going to call this uh, shutter. I don't know, because, because. I'm going to click into it, and I'm going to hide the rest of the model, and then just push pull that. No, not push pull. Actually, just delete. So I should already have. Hmm. I don't know why that happened that way. Um. Huh. Oh, because, yeah, wrong geometry. That makes sense. It did exactly what I told it to do. Software doing what you tell it to. Um, 
so the thing to do now would be to close all of this up. Uh, I got a couple options here. Um, I could loft it real quick. I think there's a way to do it without having to. Uh, it's such it's it's only a couple pieces. I'm just gonna stitch it real quick. Because you guys probably also know that that. It's so it's like soothing. Um, yeah. So we were just talking about the Super Bowl earlier. Anybody else watch that? I have to admit, I'm not the hugest sports fan in the world, but man, do I love to watch how companies can spend money. Yeah, there's some incredible statistics out there about how much it costs to run an ad during the Super Bowl. It, it's nuts. It's millions, tens of billions of dollars per second. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. And, you know, the thing that gets me the most is you would think that people are spending that much money you have like just the best commercials in the world. And some of them, I'm just like, just not even trying. All right, so I'm gonna drop this one down to here and I'm gonna say, divide that by three. All right, that looks good. Those are gonna be my bell shutters or my spire shutters. So now I'm gonna control X to cut it Go in context in here and edit, paste in place. And there we go. Now I got them all the way around. Cool. Very nice. I'm going to save. Good idea. <laughs> all right. So about two hours into this thing, and this is what we got. It's um, coming together. It is. It's. It. We, it is, and it's it's detail time. This is where, where oh, I'll tap. Um, we have to start detailing this thing. All right, so we know we have a little bit of misalignment from the photo, possibly because of old architecture. But I'm going to drop a center line right here, and I'm going to put a circle. Let's see, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten circles inside this main circle. So I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to give it 30 sides. And pull that up because I want whatever I put in there to be divisible by three. I'm going to offset that ever so slightly. Oops. Actually, first I'm going to get rid of this line in the middle, and then I'm going to offset that ever so slightly in, and out. And then I'm going to pull this one out a little bit, push this guy in a little bit. All right, and this is one of those spots where I keep talking about this and I should probably just do this at some point. We could make an entire modeling session, not from this photo, but from the right photo. You could actually probably just, all these details, we could do some subdivision, some really cool stuff, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to phone it in a little bit because <laughs> this particular picture is not really uh, the one to try to do this whole thing from. I am seeing definitely the uh, effects of the distortion on, of the photo. All right. Gonna come up and take this, offset this out just a little bit. Gonna pull that up, and now all right. 
I'm going to take all of the church and group it temporarily. Um, I love it. Thanks for, you guys are awesome covering the, talking already about uh, how to use segments and that kind of stuff. You got it. I don't even have to answer questions anymore. Somebody else get that for me. <laughs> All right, um, I think that's too big, but let me see what happens if I go. Lost my middle point. All right, so if I take that, I go all the way around like this, and I say divide that by five. Let's see how that lines up with what we got here. We can make that work. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna offset. Five and three eighths. Oops. I'm gonna, oop. So I'm gonna offset that five and a half inches. Just get rid of all this. Make this first. Oh, broken arc. Clean all that up. Pull that up like half as far as this circle, just because that makes sense to me. Come back out here, look at what kind of, looks like we got a five thing, <laughs> pentagonal shape. I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna do this part kind of quick because I'm, uh, because I'm gonna. I don't have to justify myself. All right, five sides. Oh. Five sides. I already forgot how they went. Is it up? Okay. I put a circle here. Is that going to work right? I don't know. Let's find out. You guys are catching the outside of my interior monologue. And take that and go. What's 360 divided by 5? 60, right? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> no. 120. No. <laughs> Not that either. Okay. All right, let's try that again. All right, I'm gonna take it from here. If I kept my pentagon instead of throwing it away, this would be awful easy. 4x, no, I don't know what that point was. All right, <laughs> just put the pentagon back in. This is fantastic. 72, thank you. Yeah, math's a jerk, am I right? Yeah, it's hard to do math on command if you're just sitting there <laughs> not thinking about anything and you get asked a question, you can come up with the answer, but doing it on command, hey you, what's such and such a number? It's very off-putting. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. This is going to be a different version of, of what is actually in the cathedral, but it's going to be, it's going to be something. 
That I promise you, it will be something. Oops, delete too much. I OD'd, I over deleted. Okay, there we go. And these little guys will have to get, and then I should be able to just run cleanup on this and get rid of all my stray edges. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna pull that out that far. And I'm just gonna grab all this, go to extensions and get my stray geometry. And now grab all of that make that a component. I'm gonna call it flower because that's what it looks like. I'm gonna take that, divide by five, yeah. And I'll take these extra four Um, you know, these aren't actually solids, so I can't merge them, but I wonder how much work would it be to make them solid? I think very little. Let's see. If I go on the back here, do just some real quick stitching like that, and then erase these extra faces because they're not actually part of what I need. Because that all butts up against the window face. I think if I just all right, so now it's a solid component. Nice. So what that means is I can come over here, grab my solid tools, and just theoretically. Grab all these, hit a button. Oh, I oh, love it when a plan yes. comes together. <laughs> oh, yes. To I mean, I totally had confidence that all of that was going to work out perfectly. That's what I meant to say. All right, in here, um, I'm just going to, there's these like, I don't know what you even call any, any parts of this thing. There's these straight deals. So I'm just going to take one of these, same way I did the, the flowers, I'm going to copy straight down, divide that by five, one, two, three, four, five, and then I can take these three spots, or three pieces, spin them 180 degrees about the middle, and then I will pull each of these up just to give me some depth, because again, <coughs> something about when you're modeling, you can see lines, but lines don't not lines aren't real. They don't really exist. <laughs> They're just, you know, you can't pick up a line. Anything you pick up or exists in the real world has depth to it. So I'm gonna get a little push pull out there to get that depth. All right. So there is a fair facsimile of the thing that is that. Um, I'm gonna make keep on going here. I'm going to get that. All right, and I'm going to actually copy that over here. And then take both of these offset. Oh, no, I'm going to erase. Whoops, too much. There we go. I'm going to offset that slightly to get that little curve around the outside that I can pull up. Like that. And then this in a group I did. I'm gonna explode that back out. 
reverse that. Man, it's hot in here. Hold on, I gotta take a water break. Sorry, you guys can't experience that, but I don't know if it's because it's cold outside, but somebody has has turned the heat up to a noticeably uh, high amount. That stringing together of English that just happened right now, I'm gonna blame on the heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so this is gonna look a little weird at first, but I wanna offset initially for that first window piece. And then I'm gonna pull this straight down like this. There we go. And then I'll get rid of these extra lines like that. And I can push these in. And then I'll just do this a couple more times. All right, something like that. Down here, oh, I almost alt tab, but then I caught myself. Um, what time do we got? Two o'clock. Oh man, we got playing time. Right here. Let me say right here again because that seems to be helping. Right here. Got a thing, <laughs> something like that. Okay. So I want to create that shape initially. because one of the pieces that I have right in there is a lip that goes around the entire thing. So I'm gonna take that, put that like that, grab those two, like that. Okay, and then this is one big arc right here. And I should point out, I know with Gothic architecture, there's rules about these arcs that I'm just kind of ignoring. Um, but I know there's, there's, it's, it's pretty cool. Again, you guys know I have a, a touch and go relationship with Mr. Math, but there is really some cool rules about the arches and, and even I can respect it. Uh, as I tell you, I'm blowing it off completely. All right, so I'm gonna grab these lines, offset them, something like that. All right. All right, and now I'm gonna take these pieces right here and just flip them to the other side. And I can take this piece right here and just pull it out to give me that initial lip around the outside. And then, again, this is someplace else I could make a component. Uh, since it only happens twice, uh, I kind of feel okay with just doing it this way. But yeah, somebody, somebody could call out, is this a spot to use a component? And you absolutely could, just like I did with the window up here. That would, that would probably be a smart thing to do. I'm gonna assume they go down that low, those alcove things there. And now, let's see, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna take this and I'm not gonna offset the entire surface. I'm just gonna offset the edges because I want the bottom to stay on the ground. So I'm gonna offset that. Oops. Offset that, offset that, and offset that. And then put 
push that into here. All right. Sweet. Now inside there, we're still not 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 there yet. Uh, we have another set of arches. So I'm going to go ahead and split this. Grab this line across here, and from the middle there, I'm just going to draw that line straight up till it intersects. Same thing here, middle. Take that straight up. And then I can just take this right here, rotate that over, and this all should be symmetrical. So I should be able to grab this one, flip it over here, and have it meet just right as well. I do like when geometry does what I think it's supposed to do. Me too. <laughs> I got to say, that's not always the case. Sometimes I, I end up in spots where I'm like, now here's what should happen. And then that's not what happens. All right, um, I'm gonna call that for right now. I know we do have a little bit more detail in there, but uh, uh, that's where I'm gonna take it to right this second. All right, so I have this window over here one time on either side. So I'll make a component, copy that over. And then we also have going down this side, we have a window that repeats on either side. It looks like I got a buttress in here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this from the center. Option copy that to the middle there. And I'll do the same thing there. All right, something like that. I'm going to save because I can. Um, so then we have, so I have a one window here that repeats here. I have one window that repeats four times here. And then I have this little thing right here, which I'll have to come in and actually I'm missing this detail here. It looks like I got some some missing. I'm, I'm missing some buttress. Uh, but again, draw some initial geometry and then go push it around as I need in this view. And I know I'm a little bit off, but. something like that. Take this, drop that vertically to where it hits that. Awesome. And now I'm assuming this detail is supposed to be on both ends. So I'm going to grab all of that. Option copy that straight over here. And I didn't make that a component either, but that seemed like a pretty small. This is when I say something stupid that turns around and bites me, <laughs> no doubt. Um, I'm going to grab all of these. So one, two, three, four pieces, faces there. Put that line back in. So we've got a couple one, questions two, in chat. Uh, three, the first of, wi four. of which is, where would you recommend someone start learning SketchUp using YouTube? Always start at the beginning. A very good place to start. Um, I would recommend if you're straight up starting from absolute scratch, uh, our getting starting vid videos are a very super simple way to uh, take a look at what SketchUp does, how, how SketchUp works. Uh, it's pretty easy. That's, that's less than an hour of videos. I think they're 
four 10 minute videos. If you go to YouTube, search for SketchUp, they're right there on the front. Um, you can get through that real quickly. That's like an afternoon. And then what I would recommend doing is going to SketchUp Campus. So if you go to SketchUp.com and click on the Learn tab at the top, you can get into SketchUp Campus. And SketchUp Campus is a self-paced set of tutorials where you actually walk through, uh, oops, wrong button, where you actually walk through creating some models step-by-step. Uh, -step. Our learning manager, Tyson and uh, Eric, put those together, and they are awesome. They, they really... It's like having somebody sit down with you and walk you through everything. And that starts, we have a, a intro one that is just the basics and it's, it's awesome. Definitely check those out. So that would, that would be my recommendation. Once you get to the point where you're through with that, then so many options open up at that point. And YouTube is a great spot to spend time watching video after video, learning all kinds of things. We have a, a set of videos that we release every week called Skill Builders that are an awesome way to go in and just learn the basics of SketchUp. Um, so yeah, that would be my recommendation, would be start with the getting started videos, then SketchUp Campus, and then just watch everything you can on our YouTube channel. And the second question is from me, but... Uh, well, you're allowed to ask questions. My question is, have you saved recently? Yes. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to grab that and I'm going to move it Oops, from the center there to the center there. That does not look centered. All right, center here. So that looks like it has a little bit of a lip around it also. Go ahead and put that in there. Push that out, push that in. This one actually is pretty simple compared to the other ones. I'll go that far in. Like that, which then pushes in. And then from there, got the same repeating geometry right here. I wonder if I'll be able to use this geometry resized anywhere else. That's not quite how that works, is it? My arcs weren't right. Uh, we've got a question from Facebook. Is this a good way to create uh, buildings for video games? Uh, to that I would answer, it depends on what you're trying to do. I would say yes, it's good for creating 3D models, but if you're gonna texture something, you are gonna need more programs than just SketchUp alone. But it's a good fair. starting point. How about you, Aaron? I agree with everything Casey just said. Dang. Um, we do have quite a few customers who use uh, SketchUp to create the 3D model assets for video games. Uh, but like Casey said, there's a point at which things like rigging have to happen, and that's rigging. Uh, texture mapping, and that kind of falls outside of SketchUp's core competency, I would say. But it's definitely, a lot of people like it because you can get 
pretty good detail on a model pretty easily using just SketchUp. So definitely people who do use it that way. All right, I don't know, something like that. That's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that my window for right now. Um, I am gonna make it a component in case I do wanna come back and add more geometry. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let it cut an opening so I can just grab it and, excuse me, Mark. Put that right there. No. Beautifully done. It's not quite centered though because this part doesn't have a buttress on it so my line wasn't quite the same. I appreciate the compliment though, Casey. I just, I just don't feel beautiful. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. That's beautiful. -er. Um, uh, just to finish up the front, I'm going to do this row of, of windows, or not even windows, relief. Um, we haven't really gotten into this very much yet, but there's quite a bit of this happening that we should, I should probably go back and, uh, well, no, when I get to it, to add a bunch of these uh, things, it's the technical term I'm pretty sure, deal, I don't know. These ledges, well, you guys, you guys know, you're, you've already proven that you're smart architecturally speaking and smart in other ways too, I'm sure. You're, you're all wonderful. Um, but what is this, what is the name for this little ledge that wraps around? Because we have it all over the place. It's up here. Uh, it goes around a couple spots on the spire. What do you call that little thing? I know it. It breaks up the monotony of architecture. It's intentional, but I don't know what it's called. Who knows? Who knows what that's called? Two, three, four. Hmm. Nobody knows. We've got someone in chat, two, chat three, saying four, trim, five, but seven. I don't know. That, that sounds correct, but I'm, I'm sure there's a more technical term for it <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Me too. So it looks like there's seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna go with that. Seven is a, a number that's used in religious buildings. So I'm gonna say that that is exactly what's supposed to happen because what I'm gonna do is create this little arc one time and then just Array it. Uh -huh. Oops. It's all trim. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's true, but I, I just, I don't, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that Gothic architects had a term for this. Like I said, I don't know for sure, but I, I think so. All I know is it's definitely a detail and we're adding it. That's right. It's a thing in this model. I like that. Oops, 
No, that's not straight. Interesting, interesting relief there. All right. Um, that is the amount of detail I feel comfortable with. So I'm going to take that right now, grab just that much. I don't want to get that. I don't want to get any of these other pieces, just that stuff right there. I don't need that one. And if everything goes well, I should be able to do that. X six enter. And there we go. Beauty. Um, so this happens a lot when you when you copy things like that in pieces you end up with these extra lines that you have to come through get rid of to stitch this is where you can grab a lump of geometry and use cleanup to merge faces and depending how that goes sometimes you gotta run it a second time you may also have to go clean up and say erase straight edges for some reason, it doesn't think that these are coplanar. Is there something inside that's preventing it? Yeah, it's always possible. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Is that better? Oh, uh, see. So I was, I've mentioned before that uh, I enjoy hand stitching geometry, broken geometry. It's, it's, it's soothing for me. But cleaning up models from the inside and making them solid falls in that same category where I could just put a little music on, sit back, and just come in here and like, oh, yeah, I want to clean that up. So I'm fighting it, though. I know you guys don't want to want to spend too much time doing that, so I'm letting it go right now. Um, it's just a thing. It's a thing I got. I, I'm I'm comfortable with it. All right. Uh, so over here, one, two, three, four windows repeating. Up here, six, six, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six sets of windows. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through those fairly quickly because. I want to, ooh, okay, whoa, what's happening here? Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> all right, so it goes down to whatever height I got for this thing. And it has something going on. Oh, man, it's so dark. I can't see anything. Uh, that's not going to work. No. <laughs> All right. That's not good either. Oh, man, look at that. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do this fairly simply. I wanna take, I do wanna take this because it does seem to grab, follow the same piece of trim as this right here and put it at the same height. And then I'm gonna offset it. Oops. I'm gonna grab this, offset it from here, and I'm gonna offset it down the same trim amount right there. And then I'm gonna pull that out. What that's going to allow me to do is when I'm, whoops, wrong button. What that's going to let me do then is connect trim pretty quickly around from here to here uh, all at once. Uh, inside there, I had three windows. So I'm going to come down here, divide this into three pieces, grab that line straight up. Oops, that didn't go straight up. That snapped just off axes. Go straight up. Same thing. Go 
it straight up and then same thing I did before just copy that over like that and then grab both these take them option straight across and then I'm actually going to take that then and copy that up right here clever so that gives me in the fewest clicks possible that stacking and then I can take that and I'm just going to offset that like that and then I'm just going to push that in 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 all right and I'm going to grab all of that and I'm going to real quick just run clean up I know I have some edges in there so I'm going to say merge faces Erase straight geometry. Oop. Eh, you won't hurt it with back there. And then I can also smooth that out. All right, I'm going to take that now and I'm gonna put it. So, one of the issues I'm running into as I try to place this geometry is that this line right here is a big long continuous line so try to center between these two buttresses i can't do that because i don't have a snap point so i'm going to temporarily draw geometry like this then i can take all of this let's go ahead i'll make it a component right now and then i can move it now horizontally to line up with the middle there. And I'll do the same thing here. Grab a line straight across like that. And that way I'll copy it, stick it right there, and then I can move it horizontally. Oops. Like that. All right. And now not too confident on my spacing of anything so I'm just going to grab those again and move it from the middle of this reference line to the middle of this reference line middle of this reference line to the middle of that reference line okay there we go there's those windows done save have eight little windows up top or eight sets of windows up top Go like this. Like that. Uh, I think I actually went out of plane there. I'm okay with this. <laughs> Over like this. Oops. All right. And then if I come here, um, I'm going to make it similar to what I did before, where I'm going to give it, it's hard to tell because it's so dark. I'm going to Give it that little lip, little trim around the outside like that. And then I'm going to offset the inside and push it in and call that my window. I'm going to take all that. Make sure I didn't grab anything on the back side. Nope. And I'm going to make that into a new component. upper window and now I'm going to take that one put it down here divide that by seven all right cool Whew. details are coming in yeah it's looking Where great all right two and a half hours in all right we still uh, got some time yeah we still got time to Plenty of time for everything to fall apart. I mean, get better. Ooh, positive. <laughs> Be positive. All right, so here, 
we got another, uh, I call this a micro buttress. No, this is a micro buttress. This is even tinier right here. So we have a mini buttress and a micro buttress. And this does shift up considerably. So uh, somebody's calling it out earlier. I will go ahead and use joint push pull to do, oh, come on, give me a surface. All right, to do, grab those two pieces, tools, Fredo 6, uh, joint push pull. I tend to use the vector push pull on something like this where I want it to go in a straight in a perfect direction because I can just hit the up arrow and then I can swap my scene and get that. There we go. Just like that. Well done. That was, that was, that was not bad. All right, so I'm gonna grab one of these, bring it over here and make it unique. And this is my mini buttress. Let's see what that thing does. This, this is where it's starting to get really hard because there's very, it looks like it just has steps out like that once and then drops straight down. So I'm gonna do that. Get rid of this. Move this vertically. Like that. And then you can pull this in a little bit. I don't even know what I'm seeing anymore. It's all blurry. It's all blurring together. Um, also not as big so all right I think something like that um, I made something is that out of plane hmm. oh when I moved that face I was trying to push it back and I slid it okay Oh, um, I just noticed uh, Sebastian in uh, YouTube chat was asking if uh, SketchUp 2020, he had mentioned it had been out for a few days. It has. Uh, it came out uh, last week, or is it earlier this week? It all runs together. Uh, like I said, I was, uh, my intention was to be running it today, but uh, I didn't have a chance to um, move my extensions and get everything set up the way I need it to, to make sure I'm at the yeah, right aspect um, ratio and all that stuff to, to, to present with. So next week. I just wanted to thank him for answering Cowboy's question for us. Um, right. And he's, Cowboy was then asking if it was worth upgrading. And uh, my answer is it depends on what you need SketchUp to do right now. SketchUp 2020 has a lot of bug fixes and minor improvements and other things going on. But if you need your extensions to work, you might want to hold off on a little while or double check their compatibility because there are some issues sometimes when you update an extension. That is a good answer. Uh, an example of that would be your 3D mouse. Correct. Uh, they haven't released the drivers for the new version yet, have they? They have not. And I kind of did the hack thing and manually copied extensions, which generally don't recommend doing just to see if I get it to work, but uh, it's, it's, it's not perfect. It is not ideal yet. Um, all right. Oh, one more. There's, there's some, some definite windows that I gotta, gotta put in, and that's like, actually I think this is a doorway, not a window. And then I got mm -hmm. a thing over here where I got We're making good time today. Three windows. It's looking real good here. for the amount of time we've been spending on it. Yeah, that's this is uh, pretty much pretty pretty straightforward. This one, kind of nice. No, actually, I think I want to do this too. Um, just responding to the chat, uh, yes, the free version um, of SketchUp is still available, and it's very good. But the uh, pro version and the shop version do have a lot of 
interesting tools that I, a lot of people get a lot of use out of. Oh, what? Um, we've got a question from chat as to All if right. we can project the image over the final model as a texture just automatically, it sounds like. Yes, absolutely. From Match Photo, we can just project it? Yep. Very cool. I don't know Match Photo very well, so good to know. Yeah. I, um, I don't have a lot of chances to use it in my day-to-day -day work. Yeah, it's, it, it is, it is kind of cool. It's uh, unfortunately because, like I said, I don't know if it's photo distortion or if it's settling of a couple hundred year old building, some of our lines didn't line up perfect. So we'll try it. We'll mm -hmm. definitely see some things that are not perfect with it. Um, it should be interesting either way. Like interesting, or yeah, isn't that wabi-sabi? Is that what that, the uh, intentional imperfections? I'm cultured. <laughs> I think that's what it is. So somebody, somebody can back me up on that, right? Mm -hmm. The idea of stuff shouldn't be perfectly perfect. I'm a big fan of imperfection. But I will say, I, this this is something that uh, I do want to point out is imperfection is easier in some formats than other. 3D modeling, for example, can be very difficult to get the perfections easier than imperfections. It's a lot easier to uh, do this, get that trim again. Um, it's a lot easier to get small imperfections when you're doing something like sculpting or painting or something like that than mm -hmm. it is to get them while you're making a 3D model, because 3D modeling kind of inherently wants to be very accurate. Exactly. I actually find it's one of the one of the hardest things I've ever had to do is to make something look imperfect in SketchUp. Everything looks so neat and so clean. It's hard to make something look like it's been thoroughly used without going into a lot of textures. Yeah. Thankfully, there are a lot of good textures out there to do sort of a rough, sort of rusted out metal if you're trying to do that. You can end up with some really nice looking stuff. And that's another spot that uh, extensions can help out. If you are trying to make something look messy, something like uh, terrain eroder. Oh, yes. That's one of my awesome. favorites. Shout out to Enerot for that one because oh, that's that definitely. is a great extension. Which I don't know. I don't. We Enerot was on here once. I don't know if she ever came back. Yeah, she's so nice. She's on the other side of the world, so I'm not not harping on her for that. I don't. Yeah, it's it's like night. There are a lot of a lot of good people who uh, hang out with us despite the fact that it's the middle of the night or some ridiculous hour. I appreciate that, because I like sleeping, so. So um, Sebastian wants to know, where do we go for our textures? Uh, and I assume he means besides the built-in library, which is great for getting started. But uh, do you have a favorite texture site you visit? Nowadays, I use 3D Warehouse, because yep. you can grab any texture out of any model on 3D Warehouse. So mm -hmm. if I just find something I like the look of, you can actually just click the little button on the right side and download any textures that are in there, which is yeah, it's super useful. Very Shout out nice. to the 3D Warehouse team for pulling that one off. Yeah. I know it was tricky to do, so they did well. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So that's, that's definitely one spot that I go to uh, a lot. All right, one last thing. Something like that. Why am I not? Okay. Whew. So sick of drawing arch arches. <laughs> oh man. All right. 
same thing here. A little trim. Oops, too much. Pull that out. And then we'll do an offset of everything except for the bottom. All right, I don't know what goes on inside there. It's too dark. So that's as far as I'm going to go with that. I'm going to save. Cool. This is, this is coming together. This is looking all right. Um, I feel like my spire is not detailed enough. So I want to come in here and maybe put a little more detail up here. And then I want to add some buttress detail. So I'm going to come up here and save. That's right. Enter rot. Not. Um, let's see. So here I do have thing of arches. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four on the front, two on the side. So I'm gonna do those real quick. Hmm. Um, me. Am I boring you? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please go on. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> just didn't sleep it's, very well last night. Oh, he was, exci he was excited about doing this. I understand. No, I'm just kidding. That's perfectly <laughs> fine. Uh, uh, mess with that I want to make these walls a little bit thinner is what I'm what I'm trying to do right now so uh, there we go cool uh, as I push these little windowy type shapes through oops too far I'm actually, I'm going to draw these from the inside. I think that's going to be a little easier. Because um, I have depth, if I draw from the outside, I might overlap the corners. But if I come here to the middle or to the inside, that's going to be a little easier to keep from drawing something incorrect. All right, just to get my scale of that window, I'm going to offset this. One more. Keep saying one more arc, but I know there's going to be more. There's always more. <sighs> okay. See how this looks if I put this here. Push that through the outside three times. I think that looks. That'll work. Um, I'll push him down to this ledge I created. And now I got to get him on the sides. So we go, same thing. We go bisect this face. That's how I fancy guy saying cut in half. I'm going to take that from the middle, option copy it to right here, and I can rotate those lines in face. Move that from the middle here to the middle here. Oops. And then push that through, push that through. All right. All right. One last time. I gotta, I gotta, okay, I gotta deal, deal with what's going on over here. So push 
push that back like that. Push that back like that. Now, same thing, I'm gonna bisect this. Whoops, just came off slightly off there. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll grab the five lines that make up this right by the middle. Option and copy that right there. Rotate those in plane. Copy over here and then Push pull to the face, push pull to the face. I think we're we're done with that piece. We're really in the home stretch here now. Oh, almost there. Um, it's looking real whoops. good. I made, oh, I, made no. a, I made a thing happen. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna work. All right, so I just gotta get this closed up. Uh yeah. I don't know. Uh, it was like that when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I what I did there. Honestly, I was push pulling that thing down. I I may have done that at the very beginning. I don't know. Eh. I I don't even know. We're getting it fixed now. It That's doesn't the really important matter. part. Yeah, it's and I can actually just do this all with the rectangle tool. And again, because this is a component, it's pretty easy to just fix that up and then Very nice. it'll, it'll be fixed on all the sides. And when we join the to get geometry together, that'll get cleaned up. All right. Um, cool. So now, I got a little more, little wait, 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 whoop. Oh, that's why. Um. This is exciting. <laughs> this is why y'all come to these live streams, right? Oh to, man, to watch, us to watch Aaron together pick models. up after himself. <laughs> uh, uh, chat recommends we save, by the way, after we finish this part. <laughs> I, I agree. All right. Okay. This piece right here is what I really. Oh, good, another art. Um. We got kind of, a, well, here, let me just start with this. All right. I'm assuming that this actually goes all the way down to the floor. And I got kind of a door thingy. See how that looks. That'll work. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to give myself a little bit of trim around the outside. I'm gonna push that in. Oh, and that's gonna hit that. I didn't think about that. I'll have to uh, put a hole in the seal or in the in the roof. These doors can go in. And then I got the same thing. I got those, uh, actually, so these will probably go way far in. And then we got the same shutter thing going on. All right, we can do that. We can do all that. So I'm gonna push that way in. Out here, I didn't actually do anything with this as far as components, um, but this is gonna be pretty easy to 
grab this geometry, this geometry really, intersect faces with model, and I should be able to at that point just delete, 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 and delete. So even though they're not a component, that geometry does repeat. And actually, let me, I think, just to save myself cleanup of another line or two, um, if I hide those pieces, this whole thing actually goes away. So I can just do that now. And then clean up and get rid of my stray geometry. All right. Unhide all, bring it all back. All right, so that gives me just my face in the back there. Uh, now I have a little bit of an issue right here. Always issues. Um, if I do that and push that back. But that's on the core geometry, so I gotta do that four times, All right, two more times. You know, so right now, I'm having an argument with myself. You guys you, you make you privy to the internal dialogue that's happening right now. Because uh, some of this stuff, as soon as I merge the geometry together, is going to be a non-issue. It's going to be real easy to clean up. Um, so like things like this, we got these reversed faces. Once this all merges together, I'm going to be way less concerned about that because it's, it's all going to connect together. Um, but I still like stuff to look good as I do it too. <laughs> so, all right, let me go hop in here, put this, put this, oh man, it's so hard to see. All right, something like that. If that's my shutter. Grab this line, option, copy it over here. And then I'm gonna just make that rectangle so I can give it some depth. Push pull it down like this. And then I can push pull this face up. That's fine. We're coming up on time in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. So okay. I don't know how much time we wanna spend on the shutters. I'm a big fan of shutters, but I see your point. All right, so I'm going to do that. And then I'll grab all of this. I mean, I know we need them in order to get it to look right, but I don't know how much. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I don't know why I did not put those in vertically. All right. Um, that looks better. That gave me a little more detail. I said we were definitely coming up on it. Uh, so maybe I'll throw a couple little windows in down here. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to do the, well, the quains. I already forgot what they're <laughs> called. <laughs> One of the things I would really would be cool to do would be to uh, put all this, I can't figure out what it's called, trim around here but I know we don't have time to do all that either but I'll just do one piece um, yeah so a couple little windows here windows down below and uh, 
Yeah, I guess we're closing in on done. Another spot. Look at how how off those vertical lines are from that. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing, just real quick. A little offset for trim. Offset in. Push that in. Make component. Uh, I don't remember what I've called everything else, so I'm just using different uh, adjectives on each one. And I'm going to move this again. I got to try. I want to center it, so I'm going to move it horizontally. There we go. And then I'm going to just option copy it over here. And then take both of these. Rotate it around the spire. 90 degrees, 3x. It gets all those windows in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to move it vertically. I'm going to make it unique. Change the name to lower window. I don't know if I used that term before. Nope, we're good. And now I'm going to go in here, grab all of that, drop it down vertically. All right, and then same thing. I can move that from here. I actually use, I'll use this as reference. Option copy across to here. And then I could have done this rotate. Oh no, but I don't want it to go on every side because it'll be inside the, the building over there. Option rotate 90 degrees. This way, 2x, put it on the back side. Looks good. It is looking good. Um, man. I gotta, I gotta figure out what I want to spend time on now. So many options. Um, mm -hmm. So, all right, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to start merging geometry because I would love to throw up a solid up on the warehouse as opposed to a bunch of spare geometry for disparate. Non-connected, not so solid. I don't know the term I'm looking for. All right, micro buttress. Oops, wrong there. Oops, didn't didn't, didn't do that one long enough. There we go. Okay. What uh, are those? I'm guessing this is a thing I did. Ob obviously, I got I got literally no one else to blame any of this on. Um, when I arrayed something, I had some extra geometry turned on. I don't know what that would have been though. Maybe the front windows. Oh yeah, right here. So when I copied this window, I grabbed, must have grabbed that line right back. there too, and then copied oh, it across. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, we've got someone in chat saying uh, it's been about 10 minutes since your last save. Oh. Are you really keeping track? Is that an accurate number? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Thank you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to grab these pieces and explode. Uh -oh. Ooh, look, I got windows. Oh, that's a neat effect, but not quite what we were looking for. No, that's... 
<laughs> oh, that's going to be painful. Undo, yeah, that's undo. That's going to take some time to fix. Jump ship, jump ship. All right. Uh, yeah, chat says it's all fun and game and, and games until you lose 10 minutes worth of arches. Dang it. Um, let's see. What's, what's the best way to do this? Oh, here. I'm going to copy this, control C, then I'm going to explode this, then edit, paste in place. Control V over here. I, I will make, <laughs> you will honor this face <laughs> one way or another <laughs> or not. No, I'm, I'm not trying to be forceful. I'm sorry, SketchUp. Be cool. <laughs> oh. Talk trash to me, will you? All right. Um, so what about if I did this, this, don't worry, I'm not going to do this on every side. Well, we might have to though. If I do it I once, not, but, but, what if, but what if I do it once, right? And then I grab these six pieces and then... I rotate them, option to here, <gasps> nine we X. We might be onto Yay! something. <laughs> Almost like I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't lie to you guys, you know the truth. You know what's going on here. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I grab this, go from here, option nine X. And then are you going to save? Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab a chunk and explode it. Make sure nothing nothing detrimental happens. I think we're okay. Grab another chunk. Explode that. All right. All right, so if I grab all this, the only component I should have is Mark. Uh, nope, I did not explode these shutters up here. Uh-oh. Oh, thank goodness, I was worried for a second when I saw that beach ball <laughs> show up. All right. What do we got, what, where are we at? That's six minutes after. Yeah, we still got time to do a little bit more if you want. Let's see. Or we could at least project the photo over and see what we get. Well, that's true. Let me try. Oh, boy. Make that a single group. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I did to make force SketchUp to think so much there, but all right. I'm just, I'm not expecting this to, to, to fix all my problems, but I'm gonna run Solid Inspector and just see what happens. I'm gonna save. Good idea. Then I'm gonna hit Solid Inspector. You couldn't hear it, but it chuckled a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I got lots of stuff. Most of this is internal of face edges. And if I look inside, you can see exactly where, I mean, and I, I haven't done anything to attempt to clean up. So, uh, but look at all this geometry on the inside, these holes that need to be punched out. So that all makes sense. I, I get that. Um, yeah, we're making progress. Oops, I didn't, nope, I just didn't get that one. Not a big deal. All right. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and project texture on here just for, just for the fun of it. So if I come in Let's here. Let's see what happens. I can come in here, project textures from photo. Once it does that, there's some spots where this works really, really well. Um, if I wanted to skip the process of modeling the windows and say, save the last hour of my life, I could have done the projection there, and rather than modeling those that geometry, that projection would have taken care of it. So that's the spot where it really, really saves time. If you look at a lot of those old Google Earth models that were created, uh, yep. that's kind of how they were created. Yep. There's like an extruded footprint and then project textures, and that was it. 
So still, if you go and look up uh, buildings on 3D Warehouse, including this building, you can find us on 3D Warehouse, but that's exactly what it'll be, is it'll be uh, the basic forms with the textures positioned on there, which I'm not, not saying that in a bad way, that like that's a bad thing, but uh, that it does happen a lot. I gave it a lot of geometry to put textures on too. Um, so what it's doing right now is every face that can be seen right now, it basically is going in and grabbing the surface and reapplying that texture to that one surface. So places like this window right here where I created a whole bunch of facets and a whole bunch of surfaces that were push-pulled, it's applying to each of those right now. So this could take a moment or two. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. How about you? I'm okay. I'm, I'm, it's, it's going all right. Um, we're going to let this run for just a few more minutes. A uh, couple things to throw, ask you guys. Uh, um, sorry, I'm, I'm running back. Uh, you don't... You're not Sebastian. Unless it's been you before Sebastian, Optimus Prime's come up several times. Um, model a H145. I don't know what that is. Neither do I. Maybe we should find out. All right, Casey's gonna Google that. A helicopter? Is that what it is? I've done a helicopter before. Not that I'm opposed. To, I've done a building before too. Um, yes, it is a helicopter. All right. Well then, we'll see. I don't know. Um, <laughs> intersect the model. Oh. There we go. Um, I probably should hit no, huh? Yeah. All right, we'll there, we oh, there we go. There we go. That is not, that's, nah. That did not turn out the way I was hoping. That's yeah, that was not what I was hoping for. Uh, undo. Um, yeah, so actually, had I been thinking about it, it would have been kind of cool to save at about an hour in and done projection onto that because that would have been uh, all the doors and windows and, and trim and stuff would have actually been part of that. Yeah, that didn't work, in case you guys didn't catch it. Not a success. Um, it's, it was still neat, though, it to was, see what it was SketchUp something. thought it was trying to do. It was something. Um, well, there we go. I think that is, that's where we're going to get to. Like I said, uh, we could spend the time. Yes, yeah, the other thing that's going to have to happen is, because the way I exploded everything, uh, some of the stuff's going to have to be intersected. So like right here intersect face with selection and then once that intersects though and I think a lot of geometry can actually get automatically cleaned up because I can grab a bunch like this and I can go to merge faces a bunch of geometry just disappeared there mm -hmm. um, but some of it still get, has geometry behind like this seems like it should just automatically clean up but I think I'm guessing yeah if I come back here I have to chip away at some of this stuff because it doesn't know what's inside, what's outside. Uh, so I would have to kind of do a little bit of cleanup like this. Mm -hmm. But then, once that's done, then I will have this thing. Um, but yeah, so that would be my next step would probably be to make that solid. I would, I was thinking about this because it was in components, but all the spots where there's little, that little trim that traces around the building, I'd probably do that outside of the full solid rather than trying to do it in groups anyhow. So I'd probably come out here and um, let, me, let me look at a spot because I was thinking of how to do this. So right here at the bottom of this window there's a piece of trim that goes around the whole model 
So I was thinking of how I could go about doing that, and I think what I would do would be something like this. I would create a plane. I would grab that plane by a point and put that point where I want to put that trim, so maybe like right there. And then I could take that plane, intersect that with the model, get rid of this, and then I could come in here and say, I'm, I'm just going to do something real simple, like I'm just going to do a rectangle. I know nobody asked for this, but this is, this is what's happening inside the old noggin right now. I could grab that, and then I could say, follow me. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, here's the problem. I cut some corners there. Oh, yeah, that, that'll do it. Um, now I could actually just take, take that and say, follow me with this shape right there. What? What's wrong with this path? There we go. There and now, that gives me that set of trim. Maybe like something like that. I don't know. Um, but that's probably how I'd go around and do all that trim, because there's a, there's a lot of it. Um, yeah, but anyhow, that's what I was thinking about when I was looking at that right now. Um, yeah, Profile Builder is another great way to do that. I actually just started playing with Profile Builder 3. I, I had Profile Builder 2, um, and it's, it's awesome to see the new stuff in there. If you haven't used the extension Profile Builder, check it out. It's really cool. It, it's a great, uh, great extension. Um, Next Friday is St. Valentine's. That's a good point. If you guys think of a Valentine's related model, let me know so we can be topical. I'll, I'll, make, I'll show you how to make a heart in four clicks <laughs> and then we'll be done at 12.03. Um, Sebastian, are you saying you have to model something Valentine's every day? or model something Valentine's Day of year. Got it. I agree. Um, a rose. Ooh, that sounds Ooh, that would be tricky. Abusive. Indeed. <laughs> that, could, that could be a fun one. Maybe, maybe. Let me think about that. I might have to I might have to prototype ever so slightly in order for that to work. <laughs> Um, I did once, it was, uh, I was fairly new at SketchUp, but somebody asked me if I could uh, model hops. It was, it was a prototype for a handle for like a tap, like a beer pull. And uh, the logo of the company was hops underneath their name or something like that. So if you've seen hops, it's like an acorn, it's like that kind of shape where the piece is repeated. So I actually made a, a solid model of, of a large hop. So it's something that's similar to that. That was pretty jagged and, and ugly, but it was, it was something. All right, well, we're there. I'm going to, I'm going to save one last time. I don't know. We'll see if, if, if the feeling takes me I might make sure this is a solid before I upload it to the warehouse we'll see I'm not sure where that's gonna go but uh, it's a pretty cool looking model it turned out all right I got no complaints about this yeah I think it turned out well yeah it's it's fun and, and I think it's close to scale too because let's see where does actually it might be a little small because well maybe not that, that, maybe not 
Seems looks about right. Mark was just a little bit closer to the camera than the building. Um, yeah. Well, as always, guys, thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for spending time. Uh, I know you're busy or have other things that could be doing. It means a lot that you hang out with us for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully everybody enjoyed that, and hopefully everybody learned something. Uh, and if you do have ideas that you think would make good models, especially Valentine's models, we would love to hear that in the chat. Go ahead and, and pop that in there. Um, a heart-shaped box of chocolates. <laughs> Open. Oh, see, you had to go. Vitaly had to go and go from something that was easy to, oh, man. But, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do something fun. Uh, Valentine-y. Maybe next, next week will be just... A Valentine model of some sort, something heart related. Okay, well, thank you guys. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks, that was a lot of fun. Uh, that was a cool model. This was a suggestion, so somebody watching actually recommended this, and that's why we created it. So we do take your suggestions seriously, and sometimes we make them. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Uh, like I said, if it wasn't for you, it would just be me and Casey sitting here modeling and. It's not bad, but it's not as much fun. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your time. You guys have an amazing weekend, a wonderful week, and we will see you next Friday. Thank you.